My cross is heavy. It's everything to me. It's my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. It's everything to me. If it's me when I'm hungry. It's everything to me. If it's me when I'm hungry. It's everything to me. It's my father, my brother, my sister, my brother. It's everything. Never will forsake me. It's everything to me. He never will forsake me. It's everything to me. It's my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. It's everything to me. He loves me and is coming. It's everything to me. He loves me and is coming. It's everything to me. Well, we're glad to see everyone this morning. We want to say welcome to the house of God and welcome to our morning devotional service. I'm sure we do appreciate God's presence one more time in our midst and we did thoroughly appreciate um, the introduction by the choir and orchestra. The orchestra actually started us off with um, a good rendition of a mighty fortress after which the choir just sang, oh yes, he's everything to me. We want, also want to welcome our well-cast um, audience who are watching over our YouTube channel or our website, apostolicfaith.org.uk. We want to say we do appreciate your virtual presence and we pray God to bless you as you worship with us throughout this hour. This is the Apostolic Faith Mission UK. This time around, it's the Peckham branch. It's not the usual Bexley branch. And we are located at 95 Fenham Road. That's in Peckham, London, SC 151AE. If you are visiting the area or living locally, um, we would like you or encourage you to worship with us in person and be sure a warm welcome awaits you. We're now going to continue our service by singing some songs together in worship and we'll start by singing a song which we displayed on screen. It says, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. We're going to sing that song and some more songs as we worship God together and Sister Comfort will be leading the singing. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you. 
ancient words. You sing the two verses sitting there. S and S, number 817. We are going to sing verses 1, 2, and the last. 1, 2, and the last. And we are going to sing that while we were the choir and orchestra to introduce it for us. 817.
God bless you for good singing. Our next song will be um, SSNS 1090. 1090. We are going to take verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4. CGS 405, CGS 
prayer would be a short chorus of the steadfast message of the love of God never ceases. So we will stand up to sing that short chorus twice over, and we shall remain standing to be led in prayer. Continue to look heaven's way, but I fear will lead us in prayer. Oh Lord, our God, we praise your holy name. Amen. We worship you, oh Lord. We give you thanks. We adore you. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your great love. Love of giving, giving your son to die for us to open this straight and narrow way for us to enter in. Thank you for your promise this year. Open doors for your people. Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name for your mercy, for your grace, for your favor. Out of the heart of love, you have made life worth living. Amen. You've seen your mighty hand from day to day. Amen. You've provided for our needs. Amen. You heal our sick bodies. Amen. You protect us when we go out. Amen. You deliver us from all evil. Amen. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. Amen. We cannot thank you enough. We just want to surrender to you, we want to give our hearts to you. Amen. Lord, come and take full Amen. and total control of our lives. Amen. Even this morning, you're going to speak to us through your word. Father, may your Holy Spirit unlock the truth Amen. and show us the way. Amen. Lord, help us, oh God, Amen. to be totally surrendered to you, Amen. that you will have your way now, so oh God guide us. Amen. We are looking forward to your coming back, Lord Jesus. Come and prepare us, oh Lord. Amen. Take away every dross in our lives, oh God. Fill us with your spirit, oh God. Make us worthy instruments in your hands that you will use for every good work. We have um, sung some songs here about our going out to draw souls unto you. Father, equip us, Amen. strengthen us, Amen. and help us to be faithful Amen. and true Amen. in that calling. Amen. Father, we surrender our lives to you now. Amen. Take total control. Amen. Have your way, Lord. Amen. You are the potter and we are the clay. Amen. Make and mold us Amen. to fit your purpose. Wherever your people are gathered this morning, we are praying that you will show yourself mighty, Amen. saving souls, Amen. drawing souls into your kingdom, Amen. sanctifying, baptizing with the Holy Ghost and fire, renewing our stand with you. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, 
According to Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 49. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things, 49 and last, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Amen. Give of your best to the master, give of the strength of your youth, through your soul's fresh glowing ardor, into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Godless was he young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give all your best to the master. Give all the strength of thy youth. In salvation's full armor, joining the battle for truth. Give of the best to the master, give him first place in your heart. Give 
give him first place in your service. Consecrate every part. Given to you shall be given. God is beloved son gave. Gratefully seeking to serve him. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of thy youth. Cloud in salvation's full armor. Join in the battle for truth. Best to the master, not else is what he is love. He gave himself for your ransom, gave up his glory above, lay down his life with that mama, you from sin's ruin to save. Adoration, give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master, give of the strength of thy youth, clad in salvation's full armor. Let's open our Bibles to the text that um, we've just read uh, from our, our Bible reading, Luke chapter 24. We'll just um, touch on a few verses there. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Well, I guess before we continue, this was um, the time of this discourse between Jesus and his apostles, was after his resurrection and before his ascension when he began to speak to them many, many things and remind them of the things he had been preaching to them for three and a half years before he was crucified. And now this was um, after the resurrection. In verse 45 there it says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. May God open our understanding. That, that is a prayer we want to pray all life long. And then the commission he gave them was in verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. Um, I guess witness is the key word there. It says, ye are witnesses of these things. I mean, th there's a reason why he talks about, he used that word witness. He wanted them to preach something that was a no-so, something that they were eyewitnesses of, something that they actually beheld, something they had experienced. They didn't want them to see, he didn't want them to preach something theoretical. 
It was very possible that while he was teaching them for the three and a half years, a lot of what he was saying was just going in but not sinking. They were not understanding it. But at this point in time, he said, you are witnesses. Their understanding were opened. And he then said, so the word witness, if you look into the dictionary, the word witness means a person who sees, who sees and reports on something they've seen. You've seen an event and you report about it. You give an account of what you've seen. It's typical, a typical example of a witness, something you witness, or a witness is perhaps maybe there's um, an incident or maybe an accident. Sometimes there's what they call witness statements. The police will come there and want to find out one or two people that actually witnessed the occurrence. Or perhaps maybe there was a criminal activity in an area. They'll be looking for witness because witness is very, very powerful. Actually, I mean, you know, in the impeachment trial that was going on in the US, one major phrase they were using was, um, they said, without witnesses and documents, that there can be no trial. Of course, they had witnesses in the previous one. But the point being made here is witnesses are extremely important that before a trial can become important and become valid, there must be some witnesses. Some people who actually saw what happened and gave some statements about it. And this is why even when Jesus Christ was arrested, we remember that they had to bring false witnesses. At least people who actually, the allegation that was thrown against him, they had to bring people who said, yes, he did it. So those, although they were false witnesses, but it was important to have witnesses. So we can see, and we pray God to make us effective witnesses. Amen. You see, when a witness is effective, then the chances of, um, you know, the, the, the point being made or the, 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 the something being put across of going through is very, very high. That's why effective witnesses are extremely important. I mean, in terms of the verb, if you look at the verb, it's that witness. You might talk about um, when you, you can say someone is a witness, or you could say someone witnessed something. When you witness something, it's, you're using the verb, so that means you have knowledge of. You have knowledge of what happened. You've experienced something. And that's why sometimes witnesses kind of come up and say, yes, I will say, I saw it. I knew what happened. And that becomes very, very valid and very, very potent. It's so powerful that even sometimes there's what they call witness intimidation, whereby the witness, maybe for some reason, his life might be under threat and they get police protection. Their police may make sure that they do everything to protect the family and the individual that perhaps maybe it's a case that is very, very, you know, maybe a case that involves um, maybe capital punishment or whatever. And sometimes people may want to actually try and circumvent what the witness is trying to do. And they get a lot of um, protection. So we can, we can see the importance here. Now, in, in, in verse 46 of the verse of the scripture we read, it said, and, and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoved... Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And verse 48 again, and ye are witnesses of these things. You can see he's saying they are witnesses. I am saying something, you know, he dwelt with them for 40 days after he resurrected, and they knew when he was crucified. They saw him when, you know, when they maltreated him, they flogged him, did all sorts of cruelty against him, and he was hung on that tree, and they saw him actually expire and die. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, and he appeared to them several times over the course of 40 days. And when he was about to ascend, he gave that statement and said, look, ye are witnesses. This is a no-so experience now. And he was kind of linking it to even before when, you know, Jesus Christ was there for three and a half years before he actually died. Though he said all those things to them, but they, didn't, they couldn't comprehend it. That was why, even in the scripture, well, that was why he was now saying, at least you saw that 
I told you before that I'm going to suffer and die, it's now happened. Ye are now witnesses of it. Witnesses of these things. So, now there is witness then, there was that commission now that it was given to them to kind of um, go there. If we look into Acts chapter 1, verses 4 to 8, which we are familiar with, it said, I'm being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, uh, which saith that um, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father had put in his name, in his own name, in his own power. Now, look at this. This was a bit of a distraction. They were more concerned about what was troubling them more was that the enemies, the, um, the Romans, were actually oppressing them. They were under a lot of oppression, and they were thinking, just Christ is powerful. While he was trying to give them a commission, they said, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel, back to Israel that we can enjoy? And he quickly said, no, it's not unto you. He then went back to focus on the message, which he then said to them in that next verse, he said, um, in that verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. The essence of the Holy Ghost was for the disciples, they are supposed to be witnesses. Something they have seen, something they could say, yes, I know he resurrected. Then he wanted them to actually spread the news. They wanted them to actually say, actually, when Jesus Christ came initially, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He preached for three and a half years. He did so much. Now he had left the scene. He was giving that commission now to the apostles and the disciples, saying, now ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Basically, the point we're making here is, when we talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost, oftentimes that third experience, it's for a purpose. And that purpose is to be an effective witness. There's a possibility that they witnessed a lot of what Christ did while he was alive. He healed the sick. He provided food for 5,000, isn't at one time. You know, you know, another time... He provided for more. He did so many wonderful things. They witnessed it. But at that time, they were very passive. They were very inactive. They were not effective. That was why when he was arrested, they all ran away. All his apostles ran away. But at this time, he said they should tarry because he wanted to empower them. He wanted to equip them, empower them, and enable them to actually spread the gospel. That was the essence of the Holy Ghost. He said, ye shall be witnesses unto me. And actually, when we read the Acts of the Apostles, in the first eight chapters, the focus was on Jerusalem. First seven chapters, the focus was on Jerusalem. Preaching there, from 8 to 12, it was Judea and Samaria. That was when he said, Jerusalem first, Judea and Samaria, and then to the Gentiles. From, verse, from chapter 13 all the way through, that was where Paul took the gospel to the Gentiles. So it happened that it, what he said, that promise, that scripture he quoted in Acts there, actually was fulfilled. They were first witnesses in Jerusalem. They moved to Judea, Samaria, and then to the Gentiles because they became effective witnesses. And we want to be very, very effective, and we pray God to empower us with his Holy Ghost. So, something of, of, of importance here was, um, we, we could see here that even in verse 2 of that Acts chapter 1, he was saying there in, in, in that verse 2 that um, they, he, he said they, um, in, in chapter, he said they kind of, he showed himself alive unto them, you know, with many infallible proofs. 
Basically, while he was alive, he showed himself. So that means they witnessed so many things. He showed himself alive with many infallible proofs that they knew this was the Messiah. There wasn't any doubt in their minds. Even doubting Thomas had crossed the other side. After feeling his hands and everything, there was so much that was said that he knew that this indeed is the Messiah. So he was now saying, having done that now, he was giving that commission to them. That repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. No one that in John 20, 29 said, Just saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. What it means there is, these were eyewitnesses. In the Acts of the Apostles, that's why, you know, they, they were blessed people. But those of us that don't have, that are not eyewitnesses, we can call ourselves heart witnesses. Not eyewitnesses in the sense that we didn't see just Christ in the flesh. But he said, blessed are they. That when that preaching, because that preaching started from there, preaching the remission of sins, preaching the gospel, it's been going out from then, and many have been saved, untold millions, of which we thank God that those who are saved among us can say of a truth, we are partakers of that. Amen. That commission was given, and as they um, went about that commission, we can say thank God for what he's done for us. And that is the evidence of the resurrection. Amen. Paul said that, he said he wants to do nothing but Christ and him crucified. Because without Christ being crucified, he would not there can be no resurrection. And it's resurrection that brings about the power. Amen. Is that resurrection power is the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why this dispensation is called the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Because it's predominantly the works of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we may God empower us. Because the same thing that happened to the early church... They were without power. I mean, so the, the, before the church was born, sorry, the, the apostles were without power. He preached even in John 17. He was promising them about, um, you know, they'll be sanctified. He promised all that they'll be won. That was fulfilled. But the moment they were empowered, they became unstoppable. But that is why it's important. If we are going to win the world for Christ, if we are going to impact our circle of influence, we need to be effective witnesses. And you can only witness that which you've experienced. You can't be, what statement are you going to give if you haven't experienced it? No wonder. You know, when, when you know, the, 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 you know, Christ was saying, was it, I'm sorry, Paul was saying in, in Romans 8, 11 said, But if the spirit of, of, of him that raised him from the dead, that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. So if that spirit that raised Christ, that means if he wasn't risen from the dead, we can't possess his spirit. But if that spirit dwells in us, him that raised him from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies. Amen. That quickening is what enables us to live an overcoming life. Amen. That's what enables us to live a life without committing sin. Amen. It is that, and it's the witnessing that it what goes to the world. And he said to be effective in doing that, he said they told them to tarry. He said tarry. So that they may be empowered. They may be equipped. Part of the equipment, being equipped, is being sanctified. When we are sanctified, we actually, that which we are struggling with, maybe some of the Adamic nature that we are struggling with, at sanctification, it goes away. A typical example is maybe someone has a tendency to easily get angry. Maybe something they inherited from, maybe there's something in the family. When you are sanctified, it goes away. One has victory. Amen. You know, when you are saved, of course, God has forgiven us of everything. He's given us power to go and sin no more. But then all those little things that may be a bit of impediment, as sanctification, he gives us absolute freedom. Amen. He gives it to us. And he said, now that freedom, I want you to tell someone else that Christ is real. He can change lives. Amen. And he said, but you need power. You need to be effective in doing that. You need to be empowered. He wanted to equip us, to uh, empower us, and then enable us. That enabling could come in all sorts of ways. It might be by just being an usher. It might be by maybe preaching the word. It might be by just being a chorister. It could be anything. It might be just telling your neighbor. It might just even the gift of helps. 
Just actually your acts of charity. But the, that, that, that lovely, godly smile. It could be anything. You're being witness. They want to know what's different in you. What makes you tick? What makes you different? What makes you, you know, the, the, that song says, when the world's on fire, you're making God's bosom your pillow. Nothing seems to move you. You seem to be just happy in him. You're just so happy. That is it. And then you are, people will be asking, want to know you're witnessing for Christ. But to be able to do that, he said we need power. And may God give us that power. Is that same power, is that same state of being a Christian that prompted Paul to say in Acts 24, 16, said, herein do I exercise myself to have a conscience without offense before man and God. That's the thing that enables us to make restitution. Because when you are saved, when you are sanctified, there's just something there, that gentle spirit. You just want to do right. Everything, anything that's gone wrong, you just want to put it right. That's why, you know, anyone that's got, if a saved soul lives anywhere, it's a blessing to that family. If a wife is unsaved, the husband is, is, is saved, that home is sanctified. If there's, all it needs, one genuine saved soul in that house, just change, it transforms the house. There is something there that people would know. Because, um, especially then, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it makes such a, a big difference because we will be empowered. That's why Paul said in, in Philippians 3, 10, he said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen. He knew that resurrection power. He got at the point when, you know, that light shone upon him on the way to Damascus, when he was saved, that power of resurrection, he wanted to have more of it. Because having more of it means more victory. More, and the more, the more victorious we are, the more invincible we are for Christ. It, that's why he said that I may know him. So, you know, the, being filled with the Holy Ghost is not an option. It's something we need to be able to be effective witnesses. Of course, you can't witness if it's something you're doubting. Then you wouldn't witness about it. Something, I remember when I was saved, I remember very well. Having come from a Muslim background, taught goodly, good ways to, and how to live. My parents were good parents. I came, you know, they, they brought us up very well. But when I became a Christian, I noticed the difference. I knew that God delivered me from sin completely. I knew that those lies I used to say, those deceits, completely went away. I had no choice. Down to tell my dad, my dad was almost, he, 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 he almost went insane because, you know, the son he relied on, you know, went into another religion. Then I kept telling my dad, I said, dad, look, if this was of man, I would have come back. But it was beyond me. I, I pretty much was indirectly telling him, it's, it, it's a power beyond me. That's the resurrection power. Amen. Then you're witnessing, you're letting people know that, not me, but Christ that liveth inside me. We need to be effective witnesses. That's what's going to transform the world. Imagine the timidity that the apostles had at the very beginning. They were very timid. They ran, but when power came upon them, when they were empowered, they became unstoppable. Yes. If we can only be filled with the Holy Ghost, we will become unstoppable. Amen. Nothing would move us. Nothing. And we pray God to fill us with his power. To fill us with power that we may, in Acts 2 32, said, he said, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Can we see that again? He said, They were saying they are witnesses. Being a witness is powerful because the Great Commission, that commission, needs Pentecost to come on to, to, to add to it to, be, to become the mission of the church. That mission is Pentecost. Plus the commission. The commission is going into all the world, isn't it? And preach the gospel. But he told them to tarry and receive power. When they receive power, then that mission will become um, impossible. That is why God, came. God is a missionary God. The Jesus Christ is saying was a missionary Christ. And he came to establish a missionary church. It's a church about a mission. That's why there's a popular saying that we're saved to serve. You can't be saved and keep quiet. It's not possible. Unless you saved yourself. If something beyond you saved you, someone else would know. And what he's saying, someone else would know because you, you are pretty much saying without this, my life would have been, 
you know, um, the, 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 the way you've known it before. And this is why we pray God to really equip us, empower us, and make us very, very effective. Our mission as believers is to witness Christ's resurrection. And the only way witness it, you must have had that no soul salvation. We must have had that no soul salvation. That, that resurrection power. You know, Christianity goes beyond trying to argue between religion. No, you don't need any of that. All Christianity is about is the power of God. It's, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. When something takes over you, empowers you to live a life that you you struggle, you've been to church, maybe you've been to church all your life, you were still telling lies, you were still committing sin, but all of a sudden that power sweeps through you, saves you. I'm not talking about the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm just talking about when you know we're saved from a life of sin. And then that goes away, you will want to tell someone that, look, everything I was doing before, it was just religion. This is now what Christ has done in my life. And he said, we all, the mission of the church is that that which has happened to us, we need to witness it. We need to be witnesses of it to say, not me, it's Christ's resurrection that's made that change. And someone else will be blessed. And that's our mission. So as we look at 2020 and beyond, may God equip us with a mission. A mission to reach out for Christ. To reach out. But we need the Holy Ghost power. God, as I said, God is a missionary. God is sent a missionary son in order to establish a missionary church. The church is, is by design a missionary church. It's a church on a mission. And may God equip us for that mission. Amen. So we, we're not talking about, I mean, it was someone in a quote which said, um, it's a Pentecost. This was um, from, from a Methodist preacher, um, Dr. E. Jones. He said, Pentecost is not a spiritual luxury. It is an utter necessity for human living. The human spirit fails unless, unless the Holy Spirit fills. Unless we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the human spirit fails. We need the Holy Spirit that will actually enable us, fill us, and empower us to do God's will. Yeah, you know, when, when the apostles, when they were filled, immediately they had the power to preach. And, you know, the, the, imagine the boldness of Peter. Peter that was running away, that was denying Jesus Christ three times. The moment he was empowered, he stood up there for 3,000, you know, 3,000 souls were saved in one day. But that's the power. So the power of God is not negotiable. The battle of the Holy Ghost is not negotiable. And it's not a tick box exercise. It's not about, are you saved, sanctified, are you baptized? No, it's beyond that. It's about, why, is, why do we need it? We need it to be effective witnesses. So are we rusty in our witness? We need our power. We need God to empower us. Because when, when Christ said, ye shall be witnesses, he didn't say, he wasn't recommending them. He was just making that naturally. When you're empowered, you will just witness. It will just happen. You want to tell someone else about the goodness of the Lord. And may God do it for us. It will be just so intrinsic. No wonder, um, was it um, DL, this is from our, this is just an extract from our daybreak, our devotion now. This was something about DL Moody, who, who was uh, one of the revivalists, many, many uh, renowned um, preachers in, in United States history. He, he, he said something, he said, I remember two holy women who used to come to my meetings. When I began to preach, I could tell by the expression on their faces that they were praying for me. At the close of the Sunday evening service, they will say to me, we have been praying for you. I said, why don't you pray for the people? They answered, you need power. Amen. This was people, they knew that preachers need power. We need power. Without power, no matter how powerful, no matter how much we speak, it will not be effective. They said, we are praying for you. And then after he received that renewed power for service, look at what he said. He said, I went to preaching again. The sermons were not different. I did not present any new truths, and yet hundreds were converted. Amen. I would not now be placed back where I was before that blessed experience if you gave me all Glasgow. It would be as the small dust of the balance. If we are full of the Spirit, anointed, our words will reach the hearts of the people. We need the feeling always. And if we are filled with the Spirit, 
there will be no room for Satan or self. If you are filled with the Spirit and full of power, one day's work is better than a year's without the Spirit. So, I mean, the point that we're making here is, I'm not preaching it for those who are just saved and are not them, but we're preaching for everyone. For myself too, I need power. We all need power. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to be empowered so that our, our, our witnessing becomes effective in whichever way it's effective. Sometimes just your presence will do it. Just the presence of maybe a godly woman in a, in a home does it. Mommy, sometimes you see godly women, they don't need to say a word. Someone would have come. Was it a sister? I remember um, one of the sisters who had a fantastic godly mother. She's gone to glory now. She said, whenever she said she, does, she was unsaved and they do something wrong, they wouldn't even know how the Holy Spirit would revealed it to mommy. She would just come, just, just say, look, they would start feeling guilty. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. May God give us the power of the Holy Spirit. In, in, in Acts um, chapter 4, verse 26, it said, The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, for of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed. Both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And look at this. This was when the apostles were facing intense persecution. Intense persecution. Then they were related. They were praying now and telling God, look at what we're going through. It started with Herod, you know, Pontius Pilate. You know, the, you know everyone was just making their lives so difficult. But they said, because you had proposed that that would happen. So they didn't say, they didn't, they didn't complain too much about that, but they wanted the antidote. And the antidote was power. And what they said here was, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child, Jesus. Amen. So signs and wonders are to pave the way for Christ to be manifested, for that resurrection story to be manifested. It says, signs and wonders to do that. And what was the result? In verse 30, 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they spake the word of God with boldness. So you can think that people were saved, but we all need that anointing. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost that we may be potent. Our message may be effective. That our mission, that we can be missionaries. Even in our locality, we are missionaries. We need that power. We need to be effective witnesses. And we can see what happened there. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon the church because that church was filled with the Holy Ghost. We need that Holy Ghost power. We need it. We need it so that we can actually be effective witnesses for the Lord. It's not for selfish reasons. It's but to accomplish the work of God on earth. We want to effectively evangelize in these end times. We're in a difficult time. Nobody knows the threatening that's going to come to the church. Nobody knows what's going to happen in these closing days. We don't know. But one thing we know is that when we're filled with power, we become unstoppable. Amen. Nothing, nothing will move us. The early church, nothing could. That those timid 12 souls that ran away, they became unstoppable. They felt the whole place was mad because they were filled with power. We need power. If there's anything we need for us to impact our locality, for our children to come to the gospel, for people under our circle of influence to come, for us to bring people to this great gospel, we need power. I think we should convert that power. Let's go and beg God to fill us with the Holy Ghost and power. If you're not saved, God will save you. If you're not sanctified, He will sanctify you and you'll be a candidate to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. The altar is open as we sing the closing song. Amen.
need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Both the sinners and the saints. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Convict the sinner. Amen. Fill us all up. Amen. We know you have all the powers to help us. So we can be effective witness for you. Lord, everything that will disturb the Holy Ghost in us, take them away. Amen. Give us complete victory. Amen. Cover us with your blood. Amen. Help us to decide for you today. Amen. Give us boldness, O oh Lord, Amen. to talk about Christ. Amen. We know you are able to do more than we can think of us. Make us fruitful, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.